Oh, is that Derek? Hey, what's going on? Are you alright? You're on, uh, just let you know, you're on the MMA Mental Podcast with Ray and Patrick? Yeah. Brilliant. Well, we really appreciate you joining us today, Derek. Thank you for giving us your time. Can you, can you hear us okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. I'm good to go. Brilliant. Okay, then. So, first of all, I want to uh, congratulate you on taking the short notice fight, getting, uh, obviously, the big fight against Chris Lieben and the big win against Chris Lieben. How does it feel to get into the UFC? Uh, it feels good to be in the UFC. You know, I didn't have the most easy journey to the UFC, but um, to get a win over a guy like Chris Lieben, it definitely helped and it um, worked out all very good. I know we talk about you said about the most easy route, and I know one of the things that jumped out at me, jumped out to me was obviously the, the the whole fiasco with the Ultimate Fighter season seventeen. So we will we will bring that up in a little bit. But I just want to talk a little bit about the win because it was such a an impressive win. Uh, I, I assume have you watched the fight back, Derek? You yeah, have I watched the fight yet? Yeah, did you watch the fight back? Yeah, yeah, I watched the fight back. You know, um, I got some, no, I want to knock everybody out and forget them, but um, with the the time that I had to get ready, which was eight days to prepare for the fight and the notice that I had, um, I was good, you know. I was I was happy that I got the job done and I didn't just take them down and lay on them, you know, I executed punches and was working for submissions at times and just, you know, pretty much dominated them. I think to be honest with you, without the notice, the fact that you you know, a win over Chris Lieben I think means a lot and to do it on eight days I think is fantastic because Chris Lieben is Certainly one of the toughest guys in the middleweight. And obviously, it was a big fight for him, a comeback after a year. So I think, you know, credit to you. It was a hell of a win, especially on, on the kind of notice that you had. Yeah, I definitely agree. You know, Chris Lee is definitely no slouch. And, I mean, people can make all the excuses or be like, uh, he was out for a year, whatever. But, I mean, he's Chris Lee. He's a fan friendly fighter. He fights at the same time. He goes out there and he try to knock you off, try to knock your head off. And... I just did a good job of neutralizing whatever she was trying to bring to the table. And to fight a guy like that for your first UFC fight with 19 fights and now 20 fights in UFC, is, that's pretty that's pretty insane, pretty nuts. So. Yeah. It's good. I absolutely agree. Out of interest, uh, just out of curiosity, because obviously I think the biggest thing for prepare, one of the biggest things for preparing for a fight towards the end is getting your weight on. How much weight did you have to cut with an eight days' notice to be ready for 185? Yeah, that was one of the bigger things to um, get the get the weight cut going. You know, uh, I actually had to cut 22 pounds in um, eight days, so I mean, I got it done. And it wasn't like it was just 22 pounds that come off easy. You know, it was 22 pounds of I just started my training camp, so uh, it was one of those. You know, I was eating whatever I wanted to. You know, eating a little cupcakes, donuts, stuff like that. So. Yeah. That's, That's a, hell of a, lot. That's a hell of a lot of weight to lose in, in a short space of time. Do so you think, that obviously, towards the end of the fight, you did look quite tired. Do you think, obviously, the weight had a massive uh, uh, amount to do with that? Oh, yeah, for sure, definitely. The weight cut had a lot to do with it, the eight days notice, the just starting my training camp. But, you know, I'm not a fighter of many excuses, you know. I look to, I'm with the UFC, so I look to stay busy, so I have no reason not to be in shape. Uh, but what I was in strike force, it, coming down to, in every year or the last bits, months of strike force, every fighter was having a hard time getting fights. So nobody knew how to balance their camps, when to go to be intense or when to just, you know, work on a lot of like drills on getting better. So it was one of those things. You really couldn't find a happy medium and everybody was trying to figure out how they're going to make funds and work part time jobs. So now that I'm in UFC, I don't think that's going to be a problem. I think that I'll get the non get fights you know, every three to four months, so I can stay in shape, I can keep improving and just wait for them to call me and give me a fight. So, with what you've just said there about the difference between being the strike force and the UFC, are you glad that the UFC has taken over and now you're you're part of the UFC? Do you think your, your future's a bit more, you kind of know where you're going to be now, it's a, it's a bit more secure? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's a lot better with the, well, the UFC, or Zufa, the parent company of UFC and strike force, uh, it just has been yeah, has just, owned strike force for the two years. Yeah. But just in general, do you feel that now that you're actually in the UFC properly, I know it's still Zufa, but obviously the UFC is is you know uh, is a different uh, different organisation, a bigger organisation than what Strike Force was. Do you feel there's more security for you now, and you can concentrate 
on your training and on your fighting? Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, I can, like I said, I can just focus on fighting and being ready to get that call. And um, UFC, is obviously, it's the biggest stage in MMA. That's the standard. I mean, some people don't even know MMA is actually the sport. They think UFC is the sport. So <laughs> it's the highest standard. It's what everybody pay attention to. And it's, it, it's every fighter's dream to, you know, make it to the UFC. I mean, it's other organizations out there that are good, but everybody's ultimate dream as a fighter is to make it to the UFC. So it, it's definitely good and an honor to be there, but, you know. It's what they think to be in the UFC and stay in the UFC, so make it last a long time. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and how long do you think it will be before you uh, you will get a fight, or when will you? When would ideally would you like to fight next? Um, I'm looking at getting a fight in uh, March, March 16th. I believe that's the card in Canada. If not, then I probably um, aim for April. You know, uh, one of my teammates, John Jones, is defending his belt. Um, I think it's April the 26th in New Jersey, yeah. which um, I'm not too far from New Jersey. I live in North Carolina, but I train out in Albuquerque, so maybe that might be a good fight card, you know, get a good training camp in. But I was hoping for definitely for March the 16th uh, with Carlos Conant was fighting. That's another one of my training partners, just to get a good camp in with him and, you know, just make it a team affair. Has there been any talk of opponents yet, or is it too early? Ah, uh, too early, too early. I think they just got the final. They got a full roster now. Guys have fights, and now they have a full roster of who's you know who's who's in. So now they can start lining up fights according. So that's what I'm just waiting for. Brilliant. Well, the official we, nod. Yeah, but before uh, Patrick jumps in, you want to talk a little bit about uh, obviously this season of Ultimate Fighter because obviously you were supposed to be on the cast, and you've been from what I read. I mean, obviously you might be able to correct me. You've been approved to be on the cast, and because of a contract with Showtime. That had to be cancelled. Is that is that correct? Yeah. Well, it wasn't more so Showtime saying no, you can't do the show. It was a more of Showtime and Strike Force having a strange bad relationship. So when my issue came up, they were like, uh, "We're not talking about anything. Uh, we have bigger things to talk about." So I just got caught in the mix. But they wouldn't release my contract at the time because they just wouldn't talk about anything. Do, can you talk us through the process of that then? And, and is it a sense of how that left you feeling? Because obviously it must have been such a high, especially with one of your teammates being one of the coaches, obviously, and then to what happened. Can you talk us through kind of the emotions that you went through? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely devastating. You know, I went from not not being able to get fights, taking short notice fights all throughout 2012, you know, because it was just no consistency, to, okay, here's a new start. You're going to be an awesome fighter, chance to get in the UFC, earn a big contract, you know. You make a name for yourself, you know, be on a reality, reality a fight TV show. And then all of a sudden, the day of filming, after weigh-ins, like, you know, three hours before you start filming, um, the producer come to me and tell me, hey, this is bad news and unfortunate, but um, you're not going to be able to do the show just because your contract wasn't released. That's absolutely awful. I suppose they, there's always that saying that everything happens for a reason and, and if you look at where you are now and what's happened, it's obviously worked out well for you. But uh, I, I know Patrick seems to jump in. Are you good to go, Patrick? So, yeah, yeah, sure am. Thanks, Ray, and uh, thank you again for coming on, Derek. We really appreciate it. No problem. Now, uh, you and Ray touched on a little bit, but it really has, it's got to feel great having overcome so much adversity in 2012 with, with all the different situations that come up and uh, ending the year in a strong note, getting that victory over the Crippler in the UFC. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I guess everything do happen for a reason. You know, adversity comes up. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm where I want to be at. And, <laughs> like I said, it wasn't the easiest road, but it was definitely a road that works. And I beat a well-known guy, and that's just a good way to start my UFC career. Yeah, for sure, and it's got to feel great, too, kind of setting the precedent for strength force fighters coming over, getting, getting your name in the record books, and uh, putting the UFC guys on that post. Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, of course, uh, all the guys coming over from strength force got a little chip on their shoulders, understanding that they need to perform well, because they've been told all these years, even though they were considered top marquee guys that they couldn't make the transition, they were just strike force fighters. So 
just everybody being one, all the guys who made it over, you know, earned their spots to the UFC, they come over, you know, just, you know, with the mindset that they have to perform and, you know, sh- show people that they belong. Now, you, you mentioned that you are based out of North Carolina and that you also train out of uh, New Mexico at, at Greg Jackson's MMA. Uh, so what is that uh, schedule like for going between training camps? Um, well, generally, a good time to get a fight notice, which I haven't been getting lately, but it's going to get better in the future. It's, um, you know, six to eight weeks, get a opponent, you know, get a fight name, and then I go out to Albuquerque about um, anywhere from five to seven weeks and get a good training camp in. But um, while I'm in North Carolina, I'm still training. I'm working a lot with my coaches. It's more, really, really more one-on-one work, a lot of focus on me. When I go to Albuquerque, I still get a lot of attention, but it's more like uh, sparring, you know, classes, hitting pads, getting me in fight shape and, you know, just get what I need to get done to prepare for that fight. Okay, that's cool. Now, I had um, I'd seen a statistic recently that said 70% of Jackson's MMA fighters won their fights by decision in 2012. Do you think that statistic kind of validates any of the critics that say, oh, Jackson's MMA, it's a boring camp or anything like that? No, nah, I don't. I know. It's a, it's a fight, you know. We've got, we got a lot of guys showing out in the gym. we got a lot of top-level guys. You know, everybody comes here, comes to Jackson, and there's no egos. You know, everybody here at, our, at Jackson can train and get better, and that's the goal at hand, and to be better mixed martial artists as opposed to one punch wonders that's just gonna, you know, get lucky or whatever. We try to make skill. And that's a grown process of a fighter, you know? Like, um, if you, if a lot of people criticize me and say that they don't like the way I fight, I mean, you can look at my record. I have seven first round finishes out of, um, ten wins. I only have, uh, three decisions. And all of my, all of my finishes have been in the first round, like, under two minutes. So, I go out there definitely looking to finish guys, cause I don't want to stay in the cage longer than I have to. But, um, also, you got to look at the fact that I've only been fighting, period, for two and a half years. I had two amateur fights, and as of now, uh, 12 pro fights. So that whole time, it's been two and a half years total. Before that, I had no previous MMA experience of boxing, jiu-jitsu, or anything. It's just been um, wrestling before. And given that I have four knockouts and three submissions, or, or five knockouts and two submissions, I would say that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's very good. And I, I do think a lot of that stuff gets blown out of proportion. I mean, we've seen just as many exciting finishes from from Jackson's own A and their fighters like yourself as uh, as well as you know just just well planned out fights. Um, now going going back to one of your early fights, I saw this video uh, and maybe you've seen it online. There's uh, there's someone filming one of your fights from outside the cage, and uh, there's a guy and a girl cheering you on. At one point, the guy screams, break his neck, D. And this girl was like, well, don't break his neck. And I was I was laughing so hard. Do you, uh, did you see that video? And do you know who was filming that? Uh, yeah. I don't, um, early in my career, I think that was my... Actually, that was my second amateur fight. Funny enough, as an amateur, I got 2,000 people to come watch me in, in my town and just come watch me fight as an amateur. So a lot of people will oh, wow. film and take pictures and just go crazy. But, yeah, I think that was one of my friends that um, – because I was a bouncer downtown, so a lot of people knew me from bouncing downtown, so they came out and supported and watched. And one of the guys that used to come downtown all the time, he came and bought some tickets from me, and he brought his sister. And he was like, break his neck. And she was like, well, I'll break his neck. <laughs> I don't know. It was pretty funny, huh? <laughs> So yeah, oh, that was, yeah, that was that was a classic moment. Definitely one of my favorite videos I've seen lately. Uh, now you you mentioned you also uh, wrestled a little bit uh, NCAA Division Two wrestling, um, and you you also had a background uh, as a cheerleader, which you've often attributed to developing your core strength and flexibility. Um, so given that, do you think just your natural athleticism lended itself to your MMA training? Um, yeah, I definitely think, you know, the things that I've done before before MMA definitely helped me out. Like, you know, 
cheerleading, when I say cheerleading, it's not what you see, what you think, or what you see, like, most people who went to high school, which is pretty much everybody. But it's not like at the games where you see, like, people holding signs, cheering on the crowd. That's not, I wasn't the type. It was more of gymnastics and tossing girls in the air, and it built a lot of core strength and upper body strength. So even when I started wrestling, like, I only wrestled one year in high school my senior year, but um, I put up a 50 and – 50 and 10 record my for my first year wrestling in high school and I was all because my upper body strength was so much stronger than the guys that I was wrestling like I wrestled and I wrestled up a weight class I wrestled 215 and I weighed 190 so I wrestled football players that cut weight from like 240 230 to make 215 but I was just as strong if not stronger than most of those guys with my upper body strength from you know controlling girls weights above my head so that definitely Helped me out in gymnastics, you know, I had, I had stone legs and stone cores, so, you know, my stamina was good. And I knew where I was at at all times, you know, just whenever it came to the scramble, I was aware of my body was at and my position. Very nice, very nice. Now, um, I, uh, I've seen a video that Kendall Grove had did in November. Um, we all know that there was kind of a controversial decision in that fight. Um, did you hear this interview, and is that a fight you'd like to get again? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give Tim the Grove about 10 seconds, and that's it, and then we're talking about him. I mean, before <laughs> he was saying how, because um, I was trying to get, I was actually trying to get him back in the UFC. I think he won three fights in a row at the time, including the rookie victory over me, which obviously a small promotion wanted to build his name up, because I, I beat him down for three rounds. It was like no possible way he could have won it by any crazy judge, but Somehow he got the nod, but uh, I was actually trying to get him back in the UFC. I lost to him, so I, I went from nine and zero to nine and one. Then I lost to the Doctor Ray, which was a legit loss. So I now was nine and two. And then I'm like, Kendra Rose, I'm like, you talking all the trash? You went three in a row. Let's do it in the UFC. He was like, Oh, you just you need to get in the UFC. I'm like, idiot. I'm in the UFC. I know I'm going to be fighting. I know my next fight is going to be in the UFC. I'm trying to get you back, and I'm trying to beat you up since you were talking trash. Like he's saying he'll fight me anywhere, anytime. So he was like, Oh. Guys bust their butts to get to the UFC. They put up huge winning streaks. I'm like, listen, I lost to a top 10 guy only. I should never have lost to you. So, I mean, let's get it done. And he just kept, you know, making excuses because I thought he was going to, he thought he was going to be right back in the UFC. He took a fight on short notice and he lost it to some, to, to the Mamad kid from Poland. But I mean, I think he, the fight was relatively even until he got healed for maybe in the second or third round, or whatever. But it's just funny though. But now he's all about a fight. And he's, like, tweeting Dana, like, I'll fight with him for free. But before, it was like, you don't deserve to be in the UFC. You know, guys want to stay behind to get there and win a streak. And, look, you you lost, you want to lose a streak, and now you want to be in the UFC. It's just funny how things work and how I got got robbed in a decision. And funny enough, he went to Poland to fight that um, mom educator, whatever his name is. And I think he, he would have definitely had to kill the guy just to get the decision, being that he was from the guy's hometown. So it would it's just like calm, you know. So that's how I looked at it. It's just funny to me. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, well, I tell you what. Thanks again for for coming on the show, Derek. We really appreciate your time. We hope to see you back in the cage, hopefully in March. Hopefully that day will work out for you guys. Uh, before we let you go, though, please feel free to shout out any sponsors you have. Uh, let the fans know where they can follow you on Twitter and Facebook, and uh, any shout outs you'd like to put out there. Um, yeah, um, if you want to get in contact with me, hit me up on Twitter at Derek Brunson MMA, or you can go to Facebook and like my fan page. I talk to you pretty much anybody. I'm a cool guy. If you have something negative to say, then I'm not going to reply. I mean, that's just my rule for 2013. I don't have time for negativity. You know, it's bigger and better things. Time to, you know, get things done. And I just want to thank my sponsors on it supplements. They've been sponsoring me since day one, even for the UFC, you know, after the jockery that I lost. So, Appreciate them for sponsoring me and um, thank my team down at Jackson MMA and Port City Sports Performance and Port City Boxing and Women's North Carolina.